I, Hatchet Jack, being of sound mind and with gout in my legs, do hereby leave this bar rifle to whatever may find it. Lord hope it be a white man. She's a good bar rifle, and she done kilt the bar what kilt me. Anyhow, I am dead. Yours truly, Hatchet Jack. You know, well, actually, it's not really a hawking of the period because most of those would have been flintlocks, and it's a half stock. You know, you really shouldn't load out of the horn, especially considering there could be a spark in that barrel. Even though it was five years ago that I shot this gun last, there could be a spark in the barrel, and loading from the horn could cause a pipe bomb. Are you stupid? Are you stupid? And I mean, look at the ramrod. It's made out of fiberglass. You must be dumb, you know it? I've watched a lot of your videos. You're not even going to put a patch behind that ball as you load it. Now, now you have a loaded gun, and you're cocking the hammer. You're pointing it at me. You know, that's very dangerous. you wonder is the way that you choose the day that you tarry is the day that you lose sunshine or thunder a man will always wonder where the made his way into the mountains he was betting on forgetting all the troubles that he knew well hello everybody out there old 11 bang bang jeremiah johnson here and today we got the jeremiah johnson classic the hawking now I know what everybody's gonna say. That's not a real Hawking. Well, you know what? It'll work. This thing is a tack driver of a rifle. I have seen a squirrel taken out of a tree at over a hundred yards with this rifle. No, it was not me. It was my little brother Caleb. But still, that was extremely impressive for an open-sided black powder rifle. Let me show you some pretty cool things about this rifle. So first of all, you'll notice we got this little brass inlay right here. That is actually see if I can get it here, a pack box. Now, I'm sure everybody out there who's watching this has probably owned a black powder or two, but for those of you who don't know, this is how you load a rifle. So what we're gonna do is, first of all, we gotta get our powder measured and put in there. So let's do that. I should've done that before I grab my patch out of there. So I got this set to 50 grains, cause it's a 50 caliber and I don't really like recoil. My hand's still healing, so. We're gonna load it kind of like 50 grains here. I'm gonna load it out of the horn. Um, oop, there she goes. Spill powder everywhere. There we go. Yeah, I know. I just wasted a lot of black powder there. Really well. I got plenty more where that came from. All right. Now we're gonna pour that down the barrel. And uh, now we need that patch that I that I got in my pocket here. Yeah. Dig it out of my pocket. All right, so I'm going to take my patch, put it in my mouth like that, and get it nice and wet. What that's going to do is that's going to loop it up. Take my. I might mention that it is probably five degrees outside right now. It is freezing. I can't hardly feel my hands. <laughs> so yeah, 
so we'll dry that off. All right, we're gonna put it sprue up. The patch is already freezing. <laughs> and I'm gonna take my ball starter here. We'll get this bad boy started. There we go. Let me take the, the long rod on the ball starter. Push it down a little more. Okay, toss that over there. And we ram it on home. If my patch doesn't freeze on the way down. All right, now let's put a cap on it. Again, it is really, really cold right now. My patch was literally frozen before I could even get it started down the barrel. That's how cold it is out here. Place on a half cock. Seat our cap on there as well as we can. And we should be ready to fire. I'm gonna go ahead and pop one of these bottles here. Right back. Now, the really cool thing about this is you might notice it has two triggers. That is because the front one is your actual trigger. The one on the back can set it down to about a pound and a half, making it an extremely, extremely accurate rifle. So let's go ahead and pop this bottle close to the trigger. So listen for the click. That was my first trigger set. And here we go. Oh, this is a pretty cool rifle, guys. Pretty accurate, too. All right, let's wake up Mr. Gong over there, as old Hickok 45 would say. Bing! Oh, it's a pretty cool rifle, guys. Pretty cool. Let's do some more shooting. Some of you may be looking at this and thinking, wasn't well, that a Thompson? No, this is actually a CVA, a Connecticut Valley Arms rifle. Now the difference is, is Thompson started making something very similar to this in the 70s, a very high quality, high rate of wood in the 70s, and everybody really liked a really high quality rifle. Around in the 90s, they stopped doing that. So, everybody who was still wanting them went to Connecticut Valley Arms, and Connecticut Valley Arms started making this one, which is a little cheaper, but it's still an extremely high quality rifle. Now the real difference is, is up here in the ramrod. The Thompson's had wooden ramrods. This one has a fiberglass ramrod. Is it historically accurate? No. But it's, it doesn't break. You don't ever have to worry about your ramrod breaking. So that's kind of a nice thing about this rifle. And now we're gonna let old Hatchet Jack have a try at it. Now this rifle has a 1 in 66 slow twist, and what that means is we can shoot these mini balls. Now for those of you who know, the mini ball is a, uh, see if it'll focus there, here we go, is a projectile that has a skirt around it, and it's a hollow base. So what happens is, is it can be undersized, slide right down the barrel, which these are still a little hard because the grease is practically frozen, but... It can slide down the barrel very easily, which we you shouldn't even have to use a ball starter, but we have to because it's extremely cold right now. And it'll, it can be undersized and you can load it faster, but when you fire it, the expanding gases will actually go into that hollow cavity in the base and expand the skirt into the rifling. Yeah, that's why that grease is frozen. Oh, break my leg off of that. So my brother Garrett is gonna try 80 grains with a 50 caliber mini ball. And this will probably be the last mini ball we shoot today because that grease is frozen. Cold. All right. All right, fire one ready. Fire one ready, Gridley. This will be an excellent deer rifle. You could take anything from deer to buffalo with this, and that's what they did. This wouldn't have been a very prominent gun, even calf locked, honestly, during the Mountain Man era, which was basically over by 1838 or so. And calf locks weren't into prominence until at least the mid 1830s. I mean, they were around before that, but once you run out of caps, you're out of shots, or as you can always map a flint out of an arrowhead or something. So, you know, this is more. You see more of these on the Oregon Trail, more of these on the Santa Fe Trail. But, uh, you know, there was some, the movie Jeremiah Johnson, a lot of people will say, well, you should be using a flintlock, not really, because his, uh, 
his story, the true John Garrison, the man who later changed his name to Jeremiah Johnson, actually came to the mountains in the 1840s and 50s. So this gun is, would be uh, would be uh, relevant to his time period. Another thing is these Hawking rifles were terribly expensive in real life compared to your smoothbore trade guns or even your trade rifles that a lot of uh, mountain men in the Rocky Mountain trapping era would have carried. So yeah, not as prominent as you think, it's still there. It's still a very nice gun. So a few other things that make this rifle really, really wonderful to shoot, just really comfortable is like this butt plate right here. That thing is designed like an old, an old style target rifle butt stock. You have a cheek rise for a right-handed shooter. Sorry, Garrett. Right here. Let's see, I'll show you that. Got that wonderful cheek rise right there. That thing is really nice. And then the thing I really love about this is the semi-pistol grip you get with this trigger guard. So that comes down there, gives you a really firm grip. And then they also got this spur down here you can put your finger on whenever you're not wanting to have your booger hook in the, on the bang bang. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna shoot this bottle right here with another 50 grain load. And let's wrap right, back here, let's see what Sweet Lips can do. Make sure I'm pulling the back there first. Nothing, nothing left. All right, so let's go ahead and try to get another 50 grain. Pretty light load, really, but like I said, my hand got smashed up pretty bad here recently, and uh, it still kind of hurts, especially in this cold weather. All right, now you may have noticed this little uh, board I got around my around my neck here. Now I'll show you a pretty cool little trick here. Now I already poured my powder, which that's you know pretty important. So now all I got to do is take these pre-loop balls, get one lined up here, get it started through. There we go. And now I can just start it and it's already patched and everything. And I don't have to handle a loose patch, a loose ball. Another thing is, is it is, like I said, it's extremely cold out here. So normally once this barrel starts warming up a little, it'll get easier to load. So let's go ahead and ram that on home. Let's see it on there real good. Let's try another longer range target here. I'm going to hang a little high this time. Or actually, I think I'll aim dead on because I'm loaded a little lighter than I was. Six o'clock. Six o'clock, you think? Yep. All right, let's try it. Got her. All right. So, yeah, you can definitely head out to 100 yards. All right, let's wake up Mr. Gong over there, as old Hickok 45 would say. Ding! Oh, it's pretty cool, all right. Pretty cool. Let's do some more shooting. As always, thank you for watching. Uh, this is about all we're going to do today. We're going to get warm. It's freezing cold out here, so we're going to call it a day. So, as always, thanks for watching, and uh, watch your top knot, Pilgrim. <laughs>